large-scale coal mining in Alabama began in the 1850s. During the infancy of coal extraction, the primitive methods and machinery often required many men to do the jobs. As collieries became more efficient in the 1920s, thousands were put out of work. With minor strikes, the Great Depression, and workers being replaced by equipment, bootleg mining was conceived. Oftentimes, these racketeers would reopen mines that the companies had closed using existing equipment left behind. The majority of bootleg coal was sold within a 30-mile range, mainly to local merchants and families. The bootleggers would sell the coal at a fraction of the price, making it an attractive option for families and businesses to save money on heating costs. Join us as we explore the inside of an abandoned bootleg coal mine. Okay, looks like we might be on the right path to the mine. If you look at this with these being bootleg mines, they would often use these cars and trucks. And they would actually use this to haul the ore, or not ore in this case, but they would use this to, uh, to haul the coal out of the mines. Let me show you guys a little video. See that hole. little bitty hole? <laughs> this is a uh, we'll old see. coal drift mine going back to the 1890s. See what I can do. All right. There he goes. Holy shit. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn, man. I might play hell getting out of that. Wow, wow, that's cool, man. Still got the wooden support. Yeah, you've got the wooden supports. Um, once you get right up here, you're gonna see like the actual rail ties and you can tell that they were just chopped down from a tree. Okay. Uh, it's really cool. Yes, yeah, so this mine right here dates back to the 1880s. See the rail ties, you can see just the axe marks where they've cut that off. Um, basically just timbers from above ground. There's your first old bottle right there. Gotta be, man. Gotta be. What do you think the date on that is? I don't know, man. Oh, watch, watch this. I'm drinking that actual whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Tell you what, man, that's old, dude. That's got that had a cork in it and everything. Yep. Right, yeah, right up there on your left. You can't miss it. These are these crossed eyes are perfectly preserved, man. Man, that's that's a definite whiskey bottle. Right there. Yeah. Does that one have a date on that one? No, I don't know, man, but that's like gun smoke stuff. So, <laughs> you know. Feel it. Yeah, that's, that's the cork, man. That's the cork to it. <laughs> yeah, it's expanded. You can't get it back in there. Huh. Pretty cool. Yeah. Well, of course. It's a cold drift mine up here in the back country, and this is what you got. You've got the remains of a moonshine still. Uh, whether or not the revenue agents got to it, I don't know. Maybe. No, but there's the wash pan. Here's your typical uh, barrels. Uh, probably some other stuff back in here. So, needless to say, there might be there might be some more. Uh, up further back in this mine. And get an entry right there. And get a can. And that looks like the condenser, I think, I've read. This pipe that goes over the barrel. 
Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna sound stupid, but that's what it sounds like. <laughs> I'm sure somebody will correct you. Yeah. Now you're coming into the water. Yeah. The various parts of moonshine paraphernalia. There's the remains of a bottle right there. You got the can. And this goes. It goes on back. We'll just take a quick halt right here and take a look at all this stuff we've come across. Pick it. Birmingham, Alabama, early 1900s. One time, Birmingham had one of the largest number of uh, soda manufacturing companies, larger than Atlanta. Had a pretty big separation in yeah. the top right there, so just saw that. stay to the left if you can. All right. You guys can see. That little bastard over there, he's, he's got the seven and a half. Keeps going. Yeah. Just be careful. Yeah, I see it. Oh, especially right here. Right. That top's really okay. ready to come down. This reminds me of that other mine we went through. Yep. It was like negotiating a glacier wall. Right. So yeah, guys, you can see where they just came back. And typically right here on the sides, you would have your coal seam. Uh, but it appears they just robbed as much coal as they could. You got some alien stuff right here. Definitely don't go under there. Right there you got some mason jars. So yeah guys, after these mines closed, after the companies closed these mines, you know, you'd have miners come in here and just rework them. Uh, just to get coal and they would sell it to local businesses try to undercut the price um, just to make a living you know for their family and you can obviously see from the remains you know you also had some uh, moonshiners set up in this area so as you can see another moonshine set up I'm not going to go under that uh, that's too low and that's not supported. Uh, but right over here looks pretty intriguing. Got an old pipe. More moonshine remains. Mine's pretty big. I wonder which direction these guys came in from, y'all. Yeah, I know. Oh shit, I didn't even see that. What's that? How do dude? That is the same type pin that we saw over there five mile first. Oh really? Yeah. The same exact pin. Yeah. Spencer Kellogg's period. It's from Indiana or something. What do you think the date? Just uh, it's working your moonshine still. Using property of U.S. Steel Corporation. The coal mine you can stand up. I know. But then when you go further, you gotta bend down. 
<laughs> Pretty cool, man. It's right here. Now, let me tell you something. This mine right here, all these, this is history, dude. Yeah, these guys, this right here gives you a little preview, a little uh, sneak peek of the bootleg coal mines. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll do a few part episode on uh, on this stuff.